All right, uh, very good evening to everyone. It's a lovely, lovely day. And uh, I'm back again with Kopi with Vance. And today we also have a guest today to come on board to share his uh, expertise. And if you look at the title, you already should be able to know that it's what we're talking about is post COVID 19 adaptations. And um, this has been a very wonderful journey for the past two and a half months where numerous speakers came on board, shared their expertise and shared their knowledges and how to cope up with COVID-19, with doctors who came in, who, psychologists who came in. And today uh, we have a very um, unique person who's coming in. And uh, I got to say that I have spoken a couple of times in his seminars and um, his uh, Up Your Game 2016 um, page that he has and um, great guy. So without any ado, I'm going to bring him up now. Uh, let's bring in Rahul Shah. Hello, Vanan. How are you, buddy? I mean, good. Yourself? Very good. Thank you for having me on board. Um, you know, looking forward to a good virtual copy session with you today. Thank you. But I can also see that you also started to have beard. Are you trying I've to always, join me? I've always had the beard. It's only the beard was short and now okay. it's growing out, right? So okay. I was inspired by a beard bros club. So I, <laughs> I'm giving it a shot. <laughs> I get that where you're coming from, but it's look good. You look a bit different, but do uh, you enjoy it? Do you feel a bit uh, itchy and scratchy? No, no, actually it's pretty okay. I mean, I guess it's like everything else, you know, it's about maintaining it properly. Uh, but, you know, I think this was a good alternative to going to the barber and risking getting a COVID infection, right? So staying yeah. safe, staying well at home, you know, self-isolating. So in the meantime, the beard just keeps growing up. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to the club for the beard thank club. You. <laughs> thank you. Let's see if you still have the beard after the COVID as goes off in phase three. I, right? I doubt it. It's already irritating a lot of people, right? especially my son. Every time I pick him up, he makes a face. So so I, I, I got a feeling that I have to go soon. Let's see how long I can keep it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, once again, Raushar, thank you so much for joining uh, Kopi Advance. I mean, um, I think there's a numerous time that I have uh, spoken in your seminars and your engagements, which is a couple of that in your Up Your Game 2016 platform. Um, so I'm appreciative of that as well. And today you are joining us and going to share lots of experiences in terms of knowledge and what you have gathered over the years uh, based on experiences and of course with your knowledge. Um, Raushar, before we can even go on, maybe I think, why don't you, I let the honor to do the uh, introduction of yourself, please. It's very difficult for me to introduce myself. I'm not very good at doing this. <laughs> um, I'm usually the guy that's behind the scene. I mean, uh, Vanan knows this uh, very well. I'm, I'm, I'm very hardly or seldom... Uh, in the public view. Uh, however, I think since you have asked me to, in brief and short, I have a communication speaker and trainer. I've been doing that for the last 15 years of my life. And for the last five years, I've also been running a personal development platform called Up Your Game, just to encourage a barrier-free, no-frill, cost-free, uh, bite-sized personal development access to as many people as possible. So that's in just what I do uh, for work and for passion. That was uh, less than 30 seconds. <laughs> but, uh, but I know once you are warmed up, I know you're going to stop without a, a full stop. I know that, right? I've seen uh, I've seen a few of your talk sessions where you delivered. So that was great. Um, but let's get into the topic itself because I think that is where it's going to be a, a very interesting because we have decided to you know come up with a topic called post-COVID-19 adaptations. Um, and of course, as we speak, someone has already commented, Rahul Shah, so handsome. Huh? So oh people, are, yeah, so your friends already. Thank, uh, you, Thank you so much. <laughs> so he's having a good beard. So I think you should keep the beard. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he's just pulling my leg. I mean, he. this is a guy, this is a guy, Vanan, that would inspire even you. He okay. has gone on to lose 25 to 30 kilos within a short period of time just by working out really hard. I mean, oh. you talk about dedication, commitment, you know, uh, uh, he's, he's someone who has done it, you know, and, and he can do overnight cycling now. He does his hits, you know, he does all kinds of fitness regimes. Uh, and he has gotten into shape. Yes, he, he looks really good now. Uh, I so mean, he always did, but he looks a lot better uh, at this he point. He must be really fit, though. He is, he is. I think yeah. he is. A so guy with a heart of gold, for sure. But he, have, he has already encouraged you. Firstly, by saying that so handsome. So, <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. 
Um, yes, Namsha. So we we all know that you know COVID nineteen has uh, hijacked uh, every one of us in the planet. I mean, whether you are on the top or bottom or the middle. So everybody is going through a very uh, unpredictable situation at the moment. Some are getting retrenched. Uh, pretty much not sure what's going to be up in the future for a lot of us. And we can also see that some companies are already starting to cut costs in terms of retrenchments. And uh, a lot of things are happening as, as, as things are getting evolved. But of course, the economy is opening up. Uh, let me just ask you this question. What do you think the future ahead for us? What do you think about that? I, I, I really do think that to predict what the future holds, uh, is to really go into, you know, trying trying to read the future. And I don't think that that's uh, the right way to go to, for as a starting point. My, my personal thought is this. The world has always gone through constant cycles of changes. Uh, this is another cycle of change. And every time the world goes through a cycle of change, there is a new normal that appears uh, in that day, age, and time. Uh, right now, we are in that space and era and we're seeing it accelerating. We're seeing it uh, coming as a sudden jolt to us uh, simply because of this whole pandemic that we have been hit by. And, and it has put a lot of spotlight on, on a lot of the changes that were already in momentum, but I guess they have picked up pace. None of these changes are new. I mean, from, from my personal observations, none of these changes are new, right? They, they, are, they are things that were already in the making. They were on the way there. You know, whether you talk about technology and adoption, whether you look at the way that businesses are supposed to run, whether you look at, you know, restructuring the economy and, and, and you know, the emphasis of trade. Uh, I think these are things that have been happening over a period of time already. It's just that this pandemic has now put a spotlight on it and it has accelerated the pace for it. So that's my honest opinion. And I do believe that, unfortunately, uh, there will be a negative side to this where, you know, people may lose their jobs. There might be entrenchment. There will be people who are going to go without employment, income for for periods of time. Uh, there is going to be a lot of dependency on uh, on corporate organizations to exercise their responsibility. There will be a lot of dependency on the government to come up with measures to cushion or initiatives to, uh, to you know, re-engineer some of our our economic and, and, and job landscape. Having said that, however, I think it's not going to be all negative, right? There's always a positive element uh, that we can focus on or choose to focus on uh, if our situation permits us to. And this is with complete respect for the fact that not all of us uh, are in the same position or are sitting in the same boat, right? So given that all of us are in different situations, different circumstances, some of us are going to be hit harder, some of us are going to be hit less hard. And for those of us who, in spite of being hit, if we have that luxury of looking at the positive things that can come out of this, then that is going to be great. And one of the best things that is going to come out of this whole thing is there'll be a lot more new opportunities that are going to be created for individuals, for businesses, uh, for people from all walks of life. Uh, you know, this is, a, this is a best time to upskill, upgrade, up knowledge ourselves uh, and and look at a new directions for ourselves, look at new learnings for ourselves, look at creating a new version for ourselves, you know, and that will require us to be stepping out of our comfort zone and really getting more in tune with our environment, the people around us, the landscape around us, and being able to spot what is necessary at this point in time. So that's, that's my honest opinion. I think it's not going to be all negative. There is going to be some positives going to come out of this, and that's a great positive if you were to ask me. Thanks from that, uh, but also as we get uh, more deeper into the situation, I mean, we are already now at close to, I mean, even if you take it as January, it started, you know, mild, it's almost about six months or four months. Um, and also a lot of people are now staying at home, a lot of anxiety, depression, um, you know, even the blood pressure increases because not sure what's going to happen, you know, in, you know, when there's always in future, if you're not sure what's going to happen, they are, it's more like, you know, you're feeling it right now and a lot of constant pressure is going on even though with the local government is supporting so much. But even though there's a lot of businesses has been closed down as well, what I know of. And what is the one of the things that Raoul will you advise or based on your experience is necessary for companies um, to take note at this point of time? I mean, we know we talked about the impacts on 
a lot of uh, businesses the recession had taken over but of course there's also positive it would take a, a while you know 6 to 8 months to even to see a better traction on the economy because when we talk about health and economy uh, we put health in the priority first that's why the circuit breaker was on so now as the circuit breaker is coming slowly slowly down the economy have to come up so there's a 6 to 8 months period but what is your tip or your advice on that for businesses the Probably. what they should be looking out for i think look at avenues to innovate right uh, not only innovate in terms of implementing technology but i think this is a great time to innovate in terms of looking at our business models looking at you know innovating this approaches looking at innovating based on uh, you know uh, our product range and service range uh, things cannot be as usual anymore i mean you are no longer going to be able to say that i am a restaurant i only do dine in and i refuse to do takeouts right or i don't want to do delivery that's not going to be an option anymore right if people are not going to be going out and eating in large groups in large numbers the reality is you are going to be able you are going to have to find new ways of packaging your food menus to get it out to people so we are seeing a lot more thin cut services we are seeing a lot more lunch set menus dinner set menus uh recently i think uh if i'm not wrong right pardon me i'm not a big uh consumer for mcdonald's but from what i've realized mcdonald's never used to be on a third party app they used to only rely on their own delivery service yeah. but they yeah. have now come on board with grab right so uh and i believe that they see the benefits of doing that so i think as you go along you'll have to you know and this is not only for fmb it's for every single uh industry that you're going to go into i mean i'm in training and development and we are seeing a massive shift right uh, a lot of us are taking out of comfort zone there are two groups of people there are those who are already online that adopted the online space very early on and they're probably the ones that are very comfortable right now and they are probably laughing their way to the bank saying that you know what we have the infrastructure lady we had the skill sets we had the knowledge we were completely geared up this did not affect us because we had all the materials we had all the preparedness for it and then there were some of us who were traditionally classroom based trainers or speakers and overnight right overnight suddenly you had to come out and say you know we got to redesign our material we got to create new engagement activities or create new content we have to recontextualize a lot of the way that we do things uh you know we have to change our delivery style and approaches and all of this became a steep learning curve and but but it takes time you have to do it because if you don't do it you're going to be left behind because the whole world is moving in a direction that there's a possibility that things may not come back to normal even after this whole covid situation settles down if companies and employees have gotten used to learning online and they see the benefits of learning online it might just remain the new norm because they they save on logistics costs they save on venue booking costs they save on travel costs i mean come on you are going to be able to get world class speakers create virtual conferences not pay for their business uh business flight tickets right and yet get them in front of an audience of 1000 2000 people still charging the same 400 dollars to 1500 dollars for a seminar and you get more might you got more profits right so there are opportunities there for sure right so but you need to reengineer you need to remodel it you got to reinnovate it you cannot look at things from a point of view that i'm a restaurant i'm selling food i need to fill my tables it cannot be that normal you know i am a trainer my job is to go into a classroom and deliver to 25 people that is not going to be the same anymore things are going to change across all industries and we need to be able to spot what the trends are what the opportunities are and i'll say this if you can't spot it if you're not in tune enough talk to people who can help you this is where consultants come in this is where coaches come in this is where you know advisors come in this is where you grow your stakeholder pool and get more people onto your board you know get more people onto your team who i who have that foresight who have that vision to change things to work in a new landscape i think i you said it very well because innovative is very much needed at this point of time um you know there are some couple of people that i also spoke to uh, over the past Three four months. I think uh, I have never spoken to this kind of people in my entire life because this constant uh, conversation is happening, right? Because we need to know what's going to move on next. So you always have to think ahead and think fast and make sure that you know you plan a very good strategy to make sure that any possibility that might not turn up. So you must have you know there's usually a saying that you know you always need a plan A only. You don't need a plan B because if you plan everything right. you don't need to fall back but right now it's not the case 
because now you need a couple of plans, right? The yeah, alphabet has so many. C, D, E, F, G, as many yeah. as you can get. <laughs> and uh, even if you look at the uh, fitness side, um, there are some who actually just migrated to virtual, and they find a lot of challenges as well because a lot of competitions are coming in. Uh, people are offering way much more lower in terms of our pricing rates. So when when we talk about businesses uh, overall, do you think price plays a matter in a business? If let's say if you're A company, I'm company B, we are both are doing virtual, but I am quoting lower, but you have tons of experiences. Do you think price will be a matter at this point of time during this period where everything is virtual? Do you think price will play an important part? <laughs> It's funny you asked me this question, Ranan, because uh, there was a point in my life where I used to run an incubator uh, and I used to we used to help startups, uh, uh, you know, and entrepreneurs to, to run their businesses. And I've been doing a lot of sales coaching throughout my career as well. So uh, this question is something that pops up a lot, you know, even beyond the COVID situation. And the answer always remains the same. The moment you go on a price war, you're turning your product or your service into a commodity. Right, and the problem with turning a product or service into a commodity is you have no control over the price point anymore. The market controls your price point, right? So the last thing you want to do, you want to do, is to turn your product, your service, or your business into a commodity. You do not ever want to do that. So never ever compete on a price point basis. What you want to compete on is a value proposition basis. The other extreme end of this is people just putting a price tag because they they feel like that's the right price tag for them. It's like just plucked from the air, right? or following somebody else. You know, today, Vanan is charging maybe $150 per session. So I'm going to charge $150 because I want to pack myself to Vanan. But do you are you offering the same service? Are you offering the same expertise? Do you have the same track record? Do you have the same uh, customer satisfaction uh, proof and evidence? Do you have the same amount of testimonials? Do you have the same amount of... Uh, maybe Vanan has some celebrity clients you know, that are endorsing him. Do you have the same thing? You, you cannot just do an Apple for Apple kind of a comparison because you are not both apples. One is an apple, one is an orange, and you have your own strengths. So maybe you can charge 250 based on what you have. Why are you undervaluing yourself by charging 150, right? Or, um, you know, for example, just give me a moment, sorry. Yeah, the light just went off a little. Yeah. Okay, we are talking a very interesting topic right now on uh, post-COVID-19 adaptation. So. We're just getting the lights up for Raul. All right, Raul. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, right. So, so I think it's never about uh, simply just saying that I want to set a price or I want to follow somebody else's price point. It's about really measuring what is the value that are you that you are bringing to the table. You know, uh, is that and what is, justifies that value? You know, who perceives that value? Is it your perception of the value, or do you have five people or ten people that you have already worked with? You have piloted this with and they have said that this is how much I'm going to be willing to pay because this is what we perceive the value to be. So I think there's always a pricing approach. There's always a pricing model that we, we adopt when we are doing business. So it should never become a price war. But you are right about one thing. As, a, as the online space becomes the de facto space for a lot of people to do their business, especially those of us who are in the service sector, training, speaking, fitness, wellness, coaching, uh, you know, if you are in any of these spaces, you'll have found in the last two months, there has become this, this, this crowdedness, this overwhelming amount of, of webinars, online courses, talks, you know, uh, all kinds of things, all kinds of formats. And it has reached a point that it's exhausting people. That's true. And it's creating this clutter. And what's going to happen is, what's your business, what's the end goal for your business by doing this? Because a lot of these things are free. People are not charging for this, right? So what are you trying to generate at the end of this? Are you, do you have a final system to convert this into leads? Do you have a final system to get people uh, get people's contact numbers? Do you have a final system to, to make sure that you are you have a product or a service at the end of it that you're going to reach out to these people with that they want and not feel like they're being exploited? Uh, what's your approach going to be? So every, all of us need to understand why we do what we do and not just follow the herd for the sake of it because everybody's online let me get online because everybody's doing free webinars let me do a free webinar right what exactly is your game plan so everybody needs to have their own game plan and at the end of the day if you're running a business the end goal is very simple in exchange for the service and the value that you're providing how much are you making 
How much are you earning? How, how is it contributing back to your bottom line so that it becomes a sustainable effort? If the effort is not sustainable, then over time, it's all going to fall apart, right? Uh, so I don't see that right now. I don't see people having a very clear vision. I don't see people having a very clear idea as to what the end goal really is. If you look at what people are doing, it just seems that they're just trying to occupy space to maintain a presence. And, and that may be good for a short term, but in the long run, that's exhausting. And it's not going to go anywhere. Because what this is going to do is it's going to kill an entire industry. If everybody starts going online and saying, hey, I'm going to do free workouts online, where's the money? And who's going to earn? And not only are you not going to earn for yourself, you're going to cannibalize your entire industry, right? Because eventually you're going to just push a lot of other people out of business too. Because if someone is doing things for free, why would I pay somebody else to do it? Yes, I might want my one-to-one -one coaching. But then prices start to drop because people start saying, hey, one is doing 150, somebody else is doing 100, somebody else is doing 80. It becomes a bidding process, right? The only difference is not the customer is bidding, the service providers are bidding <laughs> for the customer by dropping their prices. And that's not sustainable, right? So I, I would strongly say that it's not the way to go. Uh, the online space, uh, I had a client who asked me this question, said, oh, since you're doing things online, uh, is it fair that in that case, we can pay you lesser? Because you know you don't have a lot of the hassle, you know you don't have to stand for eight hours and deliver content. You don't have to bring in your logistics. You don't have to do your you don't have to do your activities and all that. You're just sitting at your chair in the comfort of your own home. So can we pay you lesser? You know, would you be able to charge us a lower fee? And the answer is actually, you know what? Um, in in face to face uh, activities or classroom based uh, trainings, I have a fifteen year track record in doing that. So I have my 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 repertoire. I have my arsenal of activities and content and everything that's already ready, which I can contextualize and customize based on your needs. But when we go online, I'm actually redesigning a lot of those things for you. And plus it becomes a lot more difficult to engage your people on the online space. So it takes more effort from me. And because of that, in fact, I should be charging you higher. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not going to charge you higher. I'm going to maintain the same price point. So, you know, we got to have that courage to come back and negotiate with, with, with clients or prospective clients and say, hey, don't pack my value to how easy you think my life is, right? Because end of the day, it's not a, the pricing is not about how easy or difficult my life is. The pricing is based on how much is this worth to you? How badly do you want this? You know, how badly do you want to get in shape? How badly do you want to become fit? How badly do you want to maintain your health? You know, whether it's online, offline, through the internet, through a gym, it doesn't matter how and where we do it, as long as I can keep you fit, that's the most important thing, right? So uh, the price doesn't change based on how, what format we use. The price is determined by the outcomes that you want, basically. Clearly explained by the Rauja, as usual. Yeah. Um, you have experience, I mean, in terms of, I mean, I've seen many of your talks. Uh, you also train corporates. So maybe you want to talk a little bit on that, on the mindset, because uh, that was post-COVID. Uh, I mean, pre uh, pre COVID, right? I mean, when when things are all were normal, you you did a lot of seminars and courses. What is the one thing that was um, I will not say the word lacking, but insufficient for a particular person? Because why am I posing that question? Is because my next question will be also on training and de development. Is it necessary? Because there are some who think that you know what um, we we are getting cash from the local government. The government is giving us so let's use it. You know, when things get better, then we start working. So that's like not preparing for what is ahead and during the peace time. So now is the, 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 the situation is not the same as what it used to be, but still people are there who are just thinking as, you know, things will get better, then I start moving. What is your take on that on, based on your experiences and your causes that you have conducted? I think when people's psyche is always like that, not only with regards to training and development, but I think with anything at all, right? Uh, I mean... You can receive 20 flyers in your mailbox about computer repairs, but the only time you're going to go out there and start looking for a computer repair shop is when your computer actually breaks down. Right? So, so it is, it's, just, it's just the way the human psyche works, right? So although things are available to us, they're open to us, people start preaching and promoting to us. I mean, let's talk about mindfulness, right? Mindfulness has become a big topic suddenly during COVID. Everybody's suddenly paying attention to mindfulness, or staying at peace, self-care, mental well-being, emotional well-being. But but these trainers, these experts, these professionals have been out there for years telling us the same thing. They've been preaching this to us for the longest time. The guys take care of your own self, take care of your well-being, take care of your mind, take care of your emotions. 
they've been not they're not saying anything different now it's just that we are paying more attention to it because the situation requires us to do so right uh so same thing you know when we go into companies and we do trainings before covid it was always needs this right it's, uh, no company is gonna spend i mean some companies do spend for luxury because it's a good to have but most of our clients are spending premium dollar because it's a need of the hour mm -hmm. Right, because they, they foresee in the near future that this is a requirement, this is going to help their staff, this is going to help their teams, this is going to help drive profits, drive productivity, drive efficiency, drive better communications or whatever the outcome they want is. So they see the need in doing it. So everything is needs based. So I think post COVID, pre COVID, during COVID, things are not going to change for learning and development. It's always going to be needs based. People seek information that's of interest to them. And a lot of interest comes from the experience of pain, right? When you feel pain, it generates interest, right? It is only when you have a cut on your hand that you start looking for your first aid box. If not, your if not your first aid box is always you know collecting dust somewhere. Nobody actually goes into a first. It's, I think it's recommended that you should go and look at your first aid box every six months to make sure that whatever is expired, you renew, throw away, top up. You know, nobody does it. You know, so after three years, you finally get a cut, you go and look and then you realize that your antiseptic cream has already expired. <laughs> you know, so everything is everything is needs based and pain, I think, is the biggest uh, trigger for us to be able to learn something new or adopt something new. So the learning and development sector is not going to change from that point of view. I think it's going to remain the same. It's still going to be very needs based. It's still going to be very demand driven uh, and, and very trend uh trend influenced by the trend of the day you know whatever the trend of the day is i mean if today people start talking about innovation everybody goes towards innovation if today people start talking about uh emotional well-being everything swings towards emotional well-being if today people start talking about you know agility and transformation and everything is shifting towards agility and transformation so everything is driven by trends the need of the hour depending on a lot of social political you know uh consumer uh things like that we have, uh, thank you, Rausha. We have uh, Mukda here. She also said that most of the corporates have started implementing upskilling and getting certified to keep resources engaged and grow to the next level. So, definitely, companies are pushing on in terms of upgrading, you know, to, to be able to handle more um, workload, but in a lower man hours or manpower, and also with staggered working hours. So, there's a lot of things are happening, you know, in the coming months. Until a vaccine is found, then it's considered phase three, safe nation, and so on and so forth. But till then, it's going to be a, I would like to use the word challenge. It's, it's a challenge for every one of us, including how we evolve in this, right? Um, just to share an experience, just over the, uh, about a two weeks ago, I did my online course as well, which I thought I should be doing it uh, practically, you know, one-to-one -one in, in, in a big classroom. But then I thought this is not going to happen until next year. You know, I just, I, I just told myself, you know, right? Let's get it. So it's a bit challenging, right? Sitting in front of the computer, you need to pay an, attention to the notes, and the lecturer is now teaching you, and you don't want to miss that because you got to take an exam. So there's a lot of challenges is coming in. Um, will there be any advices that you will give us how you know we can cope up with this? Because you know, you, you train people in all all aspect of a corporate employees, where some are like you know. Um, it, it could be any topic that you'll be covering but is there something that you know at this period of time where it will be more motivating for them like picking up a skill or going through that new courses they want to or how they can just stay at home and then learn up new skills or even in terms of communications or in terms of any kind of certification they want to improve by maybe even taking up a photography you know you never know what's going to up for the next upcoming few months right uh you might you know I, i've not seen maybe probably i was thinking even for the photography businesses, maybe they might even want to do virtually, right? I'm not sure. Something like that. You take a picture and send to me, edit, editing and all stuff. So there's a lot of challenges. But what is your 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 humble advice on this? I would say that first and foremost, uh, start with a, a purpose, right? A why. Why do you want to do anything at all? I think that's the most important question that I always like to ask myself before I begin anything. Uh, so where are you at right now in your life? Uh, how do you feel about where you are in your life right now? If you're contented, you are happy with where you are, you are at peace, great, stay there, right? You don't have to do anything. Don't, don't try to fix something that's not broken. Uh, or, or keep doing more of whatever is keeping you happy or at peace. 
But if you're not, if you're someone who still feels empty or you're feeling upset or you're feeling depressed or you're feeling lonely or you're feeling cut off from the world or you're feeling restless, then that's a great starting point to first acknowledge what that feeling is. You know, how are you feeling right now? Right? And from, from how are you feeling right now, then ask yourself the next question, why are you feeling that way? What is it that making you feel that way? You know, so it could be because I'm not meeting enough people, I'm not interacting with enough people, I don't find myself occupying my time constructively enough. And within that why you're feeling that way, you'll find the antidote, you'll find the answer to that, right? So if you're feeling lonely because you're not meeting enough people, so the, the solution to that is then to start interacting with more people. And what's one way you can start interacting with people is to get online, right? Through Zoom, through StreamYard, through uh, some of these platforms that allow you to interact. And sometimes seminars, workshops, webinars become great place for us to connect and interact with people because there's an existing common ground that appears, right? Where everybody's locked into the same topic, same module, same content, everyone is listening into the same trainer. And then we have a shared experience. And because we have a shared experience, we can then follow up with one another and strike up conversations, exchange ideas, thoughts, opinions, questions. Uh, and, and that allows us to have a very constructive and healthy interaction with people that leaves us not only feeling engaged, but also feeling enriched by the end of the session because we have learned, we have grown, we have value added to ourselves quite a bit. Uh, so that's that that to me would be the, the the best starting point that find and do something that connects to your need of the hour what do you need right now how and and what you need right now is based on how you're feeling right now right so if you are if you're feeling restless because you feel like you know i'm not doing enough things i'm not being productive enough i'm not being constructive enough all i'm doing whole day is you not know, just waking up and and not just bumming around watching netflix you know and i really got nothing much to do uh and if you're feeling that way then Start learning a new skill, right? What what skill do you want to pick up? What skill do you want to learn? You know, what would be useful to you going down? And what interests you? You know, not everything has to be about business or money. Uh, some things can just be for personal uh, leisure, right? Maybe you want to pick up baking. Then you attend an online baking class, you know? Uh, some Maybe you want to learn uh, uh, how to use a new program. For example, if you know that by the time you, you know, this thing comes about, Zoom is going to be the new tool or StreamYard is going to be a new, new tool, Attend an online program that teaches you how to use stream, uh, StreamYard or, or use Zoom. So just upgrade yourself, upskill yourself, up-level yourself, but do it in a way that serves a purpose to you. Don't, don't just go sign up for random things. There are a lot of options up there. Subscribe to something, sign up for something that you think you are going to be interested in. It's going to add value to you. It's going to enrich you and it's going to serve how you're feeling right now and help to solve that, help, help to bring you into a better place, help to bring you into a better zone. Even if you look at it, uh, in the past 100 years, uh, since uh, the Spanish flu pandemic, followed by H1N1, the MERS, the SARS, the Ebola, so many viruses came in and went off, right? Or some are there, but we, the, body, the, the human body is getting immune to it with certain vaccines. But even for COVID, if you look at it, a single virus has hijacked every single one of us and put under a lot of nation in a recession period and some even some serious note on that and all stuff certain countries where the numbers are very high um with this kind of situation like what you have said you know this is going to be the new normal and it will be looking at the trend right i mean as as people i think they all have to be prepared and certain companies have already been prepared for this virtual so they're now just sitting back and you know just going through the then nice smooth sea but for some the waves are very high you know some are like really uh, stressed depressed not sure how to get started up because even if they want to get certain it products at this point of time the shops are closed so even if you order certain let's say a uh, 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 usb uh, with three multiple adapters or something like that even though you need to order it takes a couple of days if you're ordering from certain companies it might even take one week or two weeks you know for certain um, during this challenging period, um, what will be a, a company's advice as, as you will probably will choose? Is preparation is much more needed as you earlier mentioned it. Um, but what will they do right now? I mean, they are lost. Like, like let's say a, a company who does photography and we haven't planned for all this. And what will you do? I mean, is there something that you can explore in terms of, is there something like, okay, you know what? I'm going to put my photography aside first. I'm going to pick up a new skill. And maybe I want to go into the healthcare, or maybe I want to be a speaker. What would be your your, your advice on this matter, Raul? 
you know, Vernon, I, I think the, the point here is that a lot of times people run a business as if it's a hobby, right? Uh, I go out there today, everybody is talking about photography. It's cool to be a photographer. It's nice to be seen carrying a camera around. You know, they get a lot of limelight, a lot of attention. You know, you almost can become a celebrity if you can take good pictures. You know, you get a lot of fan followings. You get a lot of recognition, validation. So you see other photographers enjoying all of that. So you go and take up photography as well, right? Uh, or, you know, it's cool to be a fitness coach, you know, because everybody's talking about wellness today. So let me give it a shot as well. I mean, I got my, you know, if, if uh, not me, but you know, somebody else who might have their six packs and, you know, their own bodies and everything, they might say, you know, I'm also quite fit. Why can't I go and become a fitness instructor? Yeah. I can teach people how to do push-ups, right? It's quite simple, right? Uh, I can teach people how to eat a good diet. So what's so difficult? I can buy a few books on keto or go and buy a few books on, you know, uh, intermittent fasting or whatever it is. And then I just, I just regurgitate, you know, whatever I read in the books. So, so, and then after that, when the trend shifts to something else, people shift towards something else. There is no solid business model, especially in the freelance or the self-employed sector. Now, if you're talking about small, medium businesses and enterprises with a bit more structure, with a bit more of a setup, uh, with a bit more tangible uh, uh, fronts, even for them also, right? A lot of times it's run because, I mean, I've, I used to do consulting for marketing and I've, I've experienced this where I've had clients who don't know what they're doing. They, they, they plow in their money into paying for an office, right? They do the setup, but they don't know who their customers are. They don't. It's because, you know, basically because I enjoy a good haircut, I start a hair salon, you know, or because I like to cook for my family, I open a restaurant. But cooking for your family and cooking for strangers is two completely different things. And cooking at home for your own loved ones and cooking for people who are acquainted to different tastes is also a different thing. So there's no proper model, there's no proper foundation, there's no proper system, there are no proper processes. Uh, people just set up store and expect things to run on their own. And sometimes they get lucky and things do run. But what happens here is that eventually that luck runs out because that bubble is going to burst, right? Uh, and, and I don't think COVID causes anything. COVID or the Spanish flu or the recession, it doesn't cause anything. Now, this is not going to be very popular. I might even get a flag or I might even get backlash for saying this. So guys, please go easy on me. All right, if you don't like what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is an honest truth. As someone who has been a consultant for the last over a decade, right, I've worked with hundreds of clients and helped them with their businesses. Uh, up to maybe three years ago, I was still doing that actively. I've stopped for the last three years because I focused more on the other aspects of business. But I've, I've helped countless, so many businesses. I've seen the inner mechanics of why they fail. And this is, and recession, COVID does nothing. It, it just exposes a lot of the gaps that were already there in the business, right? Gaps in profitability, gaps in finance management, gaps in sustainability, gaps in scalability, gaps in feasibility, gaps in, uh, you know, adaptability, gaps in agility, you know, gaps in the ability to transform and innovate. The gaps were already there. Gaps in management thought process, gaps in employee management relationships. Those gaps already existed. What the situations do, what COVID does, what recession does, what all these things do is they simply place a spotlight, add a bit more heat and let it blow up. It just exposes it. That's all it does. So you can't blame the COVID. You can't blame. So basically, the business was already weak in its foundations from the start because strong businesses are growing. Yes. Businesses were able to foresee the trends, foresee the patterns, foresee. They were ready, right? Because, look, agility and transformation is not a new term that came about because of COVID. It has been talked about for the last three, four years. Change is a topic that's been talked about in the business circles for years, right? Innovation is something that's being talked about for years, right? Uh, maintaining healthy financial uh, uh, finances in your organization, making sure there's enough savings, there's enough liquidity, there's enough investment, there's enough prudence. These are age-old wisdom that has been passed down from generations to generations. You know, and this has been around for decades. It's not new learnings. But if you are going to get greedy and say, hey, you know what? My one outlet is doing well. I want to open up five more because I want to ride that wave. 
but you don't have liquidity. You're just riding entirely on funding. You're riding entirely on loans. You're riding entirely on angel investors. You are riding entirely on, on seed money. The bubble is going to burst, right? Eventually, I mean, how far are you going to go? Because you don't have a gradual, natural growth, right? You're just creating storefronts, right? So eventually, what you have is a lot of storefronts, not enough consumers coming in. You don't have enough product diversity. You don't have the backend mechanics to make sure that you're agile enough because, you know, you've got such, such rigid systems at the backend that when situations like COVID come around, it takes you a much longer time to adapt and change things around, right? So, you know, it, it's, 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 like, it's like the banking system, right? The whole world has moved on to JavaScript and C++ and whatnot in terms of programming language. And banking is still using a very ancient programming language they cannot shift away from. And then people ask, hey, why are you hiring all the, all the Indian IT guys to run our, our IT systems? Because India is the only place that's still running those courses <laughs> and teaching those things. Not because they are backward, but because their universities still see a demand for it. So they're teaching, right? Uh, and so they're churning out these engineers who are able to understand the systems. But you cannot change a banking. You can't, you, if you, can you imagine you change the, the, the entire system on which a banking uh, infrastructure is built? It's, it's going to create an economic meltdown world over because you're going to probably shut down the banks for a long period of time so that you can migrate everything. Right? I'm not an IT folk, so pardon me if I'm getting some of the things wrong, but what I'm trying to say is, as an example here, yeah, that if our systems are not agile, if our foundations are not strong, if we don't have the basics of our business gotten right, then when situations like this come, it's going to just burst our bubble. Right? So go back to basics. Now that COVID has hit, if your business is suffering, instead of complaining that, oh my God, COVID is doing this to my business, really take a hard think do a hard, like, you know, in your mobile phones, you do a hard reset, right? Do a hard reset on your businesses. Go back to the drawing board. Start from the very basic question. What is my business? Why am I doing this business? Right? Who is my customer? What does my customer want? You know, if you're still working on the old five P's of marketing, that era is gone. We're talking about the five C's now. Right, we are in a whole different world today. All right, we're talking about comfort, convenience. You know, we're talking about a lot of things that are new, where people want control. People is consumer centric. It's no longer product centric. You know, it's today uh, the, the way the businesses function is different. So, ask yourself, what is it that my customers want? How do they make purchasing decisions? How do they consume my? Uh, how do they consume the products and services that I'm trying to offer to them? What's the best mode of reaching out to them? You know, what's their age group? What's their age profile? You know, every time I hear that, oh, everybody is my audience, I cringe. You cannot have everybody as your audience. You need to have a niche. So these are, I mean, today's session is not about this. I'm not going to talk too much on that. But what I'm trying to say is go back to business basics. You know, I do a hard rethink. Take a piece of flip chart paper. Map out your business from scratch again. Pretend that you're starting up all over again. And I hope that you have the funds to do it. But if you think that your business is in a place where you cannot sustain, cannot survive, that instead of taking more loans, instead of incurring more losses, sometimes in business, the most courageous thing, but the most right thing to do is to call it quits. And that's not failure. That's not failure. That's just simply saying that that journey has come to a completion and I'm ready to start a new journey. Because an entrepreneur is always an entrepreneur. You're going to shut down one business, you're going to open a new business, right? But let it go. Because if it's becoming baggage, if it's becoming a burden, it's becoming uh, something that's going to make you bleed, you know, let it go. Don't reach a point where, you know, you keep giving false hopes to your employees saying that, oh, no, I'll pay you later after COVID is done. I'll pay you two months later, I'll pay you three months later. And they keep working and working and working and hustling for you for three months, four months, five months, six months. And eventually there's no money to pay them. And you know, they could have gotten and gotten another job. They could have tried something else. They could have fed their families. But because they trusted you, they were loyal to you, you know, don't play them out. Because if your business is not going to survive, accept it. It's not going to survive. Because if your foundations are weak, then that's just the way it is. Because you cannot overnight transform or build something new. Some businesses may be in a better position. They might have the liquidity. They may have the funds. The only thing they may not have are, 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 are a range of services and products that are more in sync to the time today or the needs of the hour today. And that's simple, right? Then you just go and procure 
or you, you create or you chat out new services, you chat out new products and you start offering them, but your infrastructure is strong and that allows you to do that. So I think it's it's for every business to reevaluate and reassess where are they at uh, and go back to your foundations, go back to your basics. You know, stop stop blaming COVID, stop blaming recession because they, the honest reality is they do not cause anything to happen. They simply expose the gaps that are already there in your business. You know, you, you, you made a very uh, solid point here because some will be just uh, reluctant to let go of the business because they think that, you know, there's still some chances. But like what the, 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 the sentence you rephrase it, right? It's the completion of a journey. So now let's look at another possibility of another successful journey. So I think that is what, I mean, people should get add up to it. Uh, because we do also see uh, during this COVID period, even though I don't have the exact numbers, uh, but based on communications and the people that I know within my circle, uh, there seems to be a very high increase of anxiety as well, especially that will lead to depression and depression will lead to, you know, other illnesses that constantly that's coming in. Your heart is just beating too much and then that will cause blood pressure. So a lot of um, unpredictable uh, situations are there but uh, like you you mentioned a very solid sentence there you know just to look at we have completed the journey and then let's start up another one or you know even to cut loss i think that's very necessary at this point of time but um, in terms of uh, upgrading let's look at upgrading itself we all know that uh, every uh, locals here in singapore we are given i think this is the second time we're given like a skills future uh, with the amount of money that you can actually invest, uh, not invest, use it for your causes, right? Um, so if let's say, Raucha, for example, right, um, I'm a fitness trainer, and I think that, you know what, during this period of time, I do not want to do that. Uh, what would be the best choice? Is this something that I have to ask myself? That, oh, maybe I like cooking, I should go and take uh, something related to cooking. Or is it something that uh, I want to learn about IT, so I go and enter. So how does one make the right choice? Because they, they are given the money, right uh i think the, the second time round but if they don't use it on the right channel or the right interest or is it interest versus passion or something that is needed in the future so there's three things is it passion love and interest or needed for the future what will be the best uh advice you will be passing i would say go back to the same thing man what what do you really want and what do you need if you're running a business uh, okay firstly the term that you use that this money is investment it's absolutely spot on business investment all right because what you do with this you know the cost might be just a few hundred dollars and the government has given you the funds to pay for it so there's zero out of pocket uh, but it's going to bring you a long way right it's going to bring you a long long way you can do wonders for you if you use it right uh, so it really goes down and boils down to what do you want to use it for how do you want to invest this money some people are gonna say you know what this was free money and uh, so this is a time for me to go and get that uh, you know, get that certification in, uh, <clears throat> say, for example, baking, that, you know, is a good to have, right? If you're not a baker, if you're not a professional, if you don't intend to go into a baking business, it's for leisure. Nothing wrong in that, right? Perfectly fine, right? Uh, and you're pursuing a hobby, you're pursuing a passion, and that's okay. However, if you're running a business and there's a need, that your business has currently for you to go and take the money and invest into something that's not going to drive returns to you then i would really question your thought process as a business owner because that same money can be used to go and learn social media marketing strategies they can same thing and go and uh, uh, use to learn digital skills that same money can be used to go and learn uh, business skills that same money can be go and, can be used to go and earn uh, web designing skills so the same money can be used to learn something that's critical to your business. The, they can help you to grow. They can help you to, to evolve. They can help you to take a new direction. Uh, so I think that money has been given uh, to all Singaporeans above a certain age. It's there. What do you want to do with that money? How do you want to invest that money? What is more important to you right now? If your business health is good, your business is thriving, your business is sustaining, and you know, you need to time away from work because sometimes we need to distress. You know, we need to disconnect from business. We need to disconnect from work. And you know, by going for a, a leisurely course helps us to do that. And that's what you need because that's your need of the hour because business is taken care of. 
you yeah. know but if your business is not doing well if your business is not thriving or as a as an employee right you find that you are you are being undervalued in the workplace or you're feeling pressures in the workplace because maybe for example you know your boss last year told you during uh, your appraisal that you know what i would have loved to promote you but your colleagues have given feedback that you know you come across too aggressive sometimes so not very friendly you know the way you communicate is it's not uh, it's 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 not cordial you know you tend to intimidate people around you so maybe you're not ready yet for a leadership role why don't you go and work on your communication skills so your boss has given the feedback to you now you've gotten this money from the government you can take that money and go and attend a communication skills program or a certification course and apply that back into work so that this year when your appraisal comes around you might be seem to be more ready for that promotion right so it's investment so look at what you need right now assess where you are how are you what's needed for you do you need passion something for passion or do you need something that can help you with your work your careers your business and, and then pick the right thing that's going to help you take that to help you upskill and up level to the next notch you know so that was a very in-depth uh, information that you share with us uh, but there's also some that i just spoken to like i mentioned uh, spoken to a lot of people over the past few months uh, there's one particular person that i spoke to he said that uh, that you know i'm going to wait until covid ends and then i'm going to work hard so i'm like okay so i'm like i'm lost for words what kind of words will you want to advise him if someone says that to you oh i need your advice rausha but you know what i'm going to wait until covid finishes and then i'm going to work hard till now i'm going to rest what will be your advice without without the the xxx words <laughs> uh I think I think people do have a hope that COVID will disappear, right? Uh, or at least there will be a control that that comes in the form of a vaccine or a medication or something else. So I think generally there is that 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 hope that people harbor at the depths of their heart, and everybody is waiting for when things get better, right? But what if things don't get better? What if this is the way that the world is going to be for the next ten years? You know. Uh, so I, I would basically just share that with them. That what if what if COVID is here to stay? What if how we are now, this lockdown, this circuit breaker, what if this is how our society is going to function for the next five, ten years? Then what? You know, because we don't know. You know, and today it's COVID. What's stopping another virus from evolving and appearing in the next one year? You That's know, right. uh, I mean, end of the day, if if. If if a, a, a virus like COVID can sudden, it's not sudden. It has probably been around for a while, but it adapted, it adapted, it adapted until it became so strong that it has actually brought our brought our world to a standstill. What's stopping another virus, or what's stopping COVID itself, or what's stopping the virus that's that, that, that COVID is has come to be known as COVID? What's stopping that virus from further adapting and becoming another version of becoming something else and and doing the same thing to us again? We don't know. We can't predict the future, which is why I think they started this conversation, uh, saying that let us not focus on predicting the future because we cannot predict the future, right? We are not in a place. The human consciousness is doesn't have the capacity to predict the future. What we know of is what we know now. The present moment is the only thing that we have complete awareness of in its most honest, the most real, and its most truthful form. Because even the past. The past is five seconds ago or ten seconds ago has become perception, right? And the future is simply an imagination. But the present moment is what we know truly as it is, and that's all that we should be focusing on. In this moment, this is where we are. And instead of me waiting for something to happen, why don't we seize this moment right now and do something good for ourselves and the people that we love and care about? You know, and that is our responsibility, isn't it? Our responsibility to ourselves and our responsibility to people around us. And it's very irresponsible to say, "I'm going to wait for the next six months and let these six months waste away," because then you're wasting away six months of God's given time to you. You're wasting away six months of God given time with your family, and you're wasting away six months of something good that you could have done. You know, those opportunities that you're wasting along the way. So I would say, start now. I would just tell that person, why not start now? Start today. Why wait for that six months? That's a good one. Hopefully, the person is hearing as well. <laughs> but we have another uh, viewer, I just said, very bold, versatile, and positive speaker. Fluent flow of ideas. So, Rausha, 
you have uh, done a very uh, not a good job not a great job but i think a fabulous uh, time with us for almost about 57 minutes where we oh. talked post adaptations and we talk about skills and upgrading we even talk about scenarios and we even talk about certain other circumstances that might happen but if i'm going to leave the last question to you and ask you what would be the advice for the day before we end the show because we yeah, i think you're going to get thirsty as well uh but i don't know so many hours but we have agreed for 40 minutes but i think you are doing more than that but this will be the last question for the day um what would be the advice from you are I will say this uh life is always going to present to us new challenges new obstacles every single day every morning that we wake up there's going to be something new waiting for us there's something new in the news there's something new around us there's something new in our environment uh and over time one thing that the creatures and the species on earth have developed the ability to do is to adapt we have all acquired the skill to adapt we have that in us innate within us and which is why i always say this i uh, that in times of crisis in times of difficulties in times of struggle and hardships don't focus your mind on growth and thriving focus your mind on survival now some people may mistake that to say that does that mean that i should not grow no what i'm saying is that if you focus your mind on survival you will be able to keep your eyes set on your roots on your foundation on your key pillars that are necessary for you to grow right because when you are able to survive you are able to adapt and through adapting you are able to evolve and when we are able to evolve we automatically become a better version of ourselves right so set your eyes on survival what do i need to do to adapt to survive and through that adaptation to survive how can i grow and enrich myself because when i grow and enrich myself i'm going to evolve and come out stronger i'm going to be a better version and when i'm a better version of myself today than i was tomorrow i bring that value i bring that betterness to everything that i do and everyone that i touch sorry did you salam No, no, I did not fix the alarm. That's my doorbell. <laughs> yeah. Because after after coffee with Vanan, the next thing is dinner with my wife. <laughs> Thank you, Rausha, for your time and you know for almost one hour that you have uh, spoken about a few stuff that we have asked you, and it will definitely be very beneficial. And for those who want to get in touch with Rausha, the email is just below here. You can actually connect with him and then get to know more. But I know Rausha. We also want to talk about the uh, Up Your Game community. Maybe within two minutes, maybe you want to say quickly about them. How where they can find you for all your motivation um, speaking um, segments with so many speakers. Maybe you want to talk a little bit on that before we end the session. Sure. Thank you so much, Vernon, for asking me to share about Up Your Game and not what I do because I'm so much more happy to share about Up Your Game. Um, you know, Up Your Game is a passion project that I started five years ago, and the whole idea behind Up Your Game is to bring. Uh, in fact, Up Your Game, I believe, was at least Asia's very first of its kind, completely free, completely no frills, no cost personal development community. When we started, in fact, people were saying, "Are you crazy? Why are you doing this for free? Or is this a preview? Is this a sales thing? Is this to get branding? Is this to get..." It's for none of those things. It's been five years. We have not made a single cent from it. We don't intend to. Uh, in fact, we have inspired a lot of other movements uh, to come up in a similar manner as well and come and give back. And I'm very grateful for that. Uh, up your game is a platform where you can come, get access to events, resources, talks, speakers, ex- uh, subject expertise on a regular basis. So what we have happening right now during this period of time, since we cannot do offline events, is we have invited expert speakers like Vanan, Joy. Wei Fang, uh, you know Harish, uh, Yana. So we have a whole slew of speakers from Sunday onwards. We are starting yoga with Archana. So we have a whole string of experts who are donating their valuable time to come on and share with us some tips and expertise on a wide range of topics. And you get to access all of this for free. These are live videos that happen, so you can either tune in live, ask questions, interact, or you can watch them after that at your own time and convenience. But the resources are there. We have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel as well. 
and very soon we'll be starting off some more formats and models online so do tune in to the facebook page if you're someone who loves learning loves acquiring new skills new knowledge new insights if personal development is something that excites you and interests you don't need to use up your skills future funds here because everything that we do is completely without cost and i promise you never will you be offered a sales proposition never no one's going to come and say okay thank you for listening to me for the last 45 minutes now i'm going to sell you something it doesn't happen at up your game it has not happened for five years this is a place which to me is a place that's pure uh there has a certain sanctity around it to me it's a temple of learning right as a purest form of learning that we happen because there's no strings attached we don't expect you to come in but when you do come in you're bringing yourself in learn receive and do whatever you want with it <laughs> thank you Rahul Shah, for that great explanation and also for the past one hour and also talking about your up your game community so those who want can please go into that the, the address is here you can also to get to know more about him and also like i mentioned the email address for Raucha, please do connect with him if you know um Raucha is one of the great guy which i know speaks very fluently he trains in communication he's a strategist and um any more bro any more no, man. no man. <laughs> so thank you so much Raucha. so we stay connected for now we thank all the viewers for joining us thank you so much thank and, you everyone uh, Catch you all soon. Thank you, Rosha. See you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.